Hey one hey all, welcome back to the channel. Today should be a fairly quick one because we've sort of kind of looked at this before, in a way. Why do I say that? Because we're going to be looking at this. It is the Tricranius, is that how we say his name? Tricranius? Yeah, Tricranius Beast Power. It was the thing with the fossilizer and all the, the blast effects. This is going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gapa. As always, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe them while you're at it, light them up, baby. And hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts comes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below, also in the description down below, and if you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link, you can check us out on Patreon, you can see what we offer to you through Teespring, or of course you can hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And this is a select box, basically, um, with, uh, you know, like a maximal symbol and whatnot on it, because this guy is a maximal. Now, we looked at Rack tonight, and this is basically a reuse of that as a maximal this time. I don't think, I don't anticipate that we're going to find anything new here that will change your mind about fossilizers. If you don't like them, you're probably not going to like this. If you do like them, this guy might be worth adding. Anyway, without any further ado, how about we head over to the table and take a closer look at this lad. Oh yeah, and it's time for us to look at Tricranius. This is one of those things like the Centurion pack was where it's a pack. I was very fortunate to be able to source this through our good buddy Triple R, Rolling Redneck Reviews. Um, obviously, check him out, check him out. I'll leave a link to his channel down in the description. And I like the fossilizers. These guys have been fun to me. And I saw this guy and I was like, man, he looks cool. And I knew it was red and black at, with a, a bit of orange, but I didn't know the way it was. This is a lot of translucent plastic, plastic, but it feels robust. And honestly, it feels like it's like magma or lava infused and the bones are charred black. And it's like layering going on here. I think it's gorgeous in hand and pictures and video do not do this guy justice for how he looks. Looks beautiful. I'm going to give it a 10 because why wouldn't I? Plus, unlike, I'll say his mold mate who is some other sort of dinosaur that I can't remember what it's called though somebody told me what it was. I'm talking about Ractonite. This guy actually is a Triceratops. Ractonite, I looked at back in episode 837, and I said his look was a 10 then as well. Before we get into any of the other scores, we're going to look at, of course, the packaging first. And here we have the packaging. It's basically Select's packaging. It's nothing special about it. You see it down here. It is what it is. You know, nothing great. What is great is what's inside. First things first, when you open it up, you do have beautiful art in here, and it really feeds into what I said. Like, he's standing there around lava and magma, and things are burned, and, like, he fits in there. It's a beautiful scene, and he is a gorgeous uh, mold and coloration of it. We've also got like a butt ton of instructions here. We're not going to be doing the transformations because I already covered those when I looked at Rack tonight. The transformations are the same, but we're going to see how things kind of play out here all the same. And then we've got a black box that says Transformers War for Cybertron on it. There's, I don't know, electricity, lava flow, whatever. When we open it off, there's some tissue paper in here and a whole bunch of blast effects, a ton of them, actually. And, you know, they seem to be very similar, if not the exact same thing, as the ones that came with, um, say, Omega Supreme or the Ark, no, not the Ark, um, Jetfire, uh, Skylinks. I don't think any came with the Ark. Maybe some came with the Ark. I don't remember. Maybe they didn't come with the Ark. Yeah, blue ones came with the Ark, I think. Um, so these are the same sort of thing as that. It's molds that we have that we've seen, but I'm happy to have these. It looks like these blue ones are the ones that came with, say, uh, Skylinks. And it looks like these pink ones are more like the ones that came with 
um, Omega Supreme. And then we have a couple that are these like little blast effects that, uh, you know, it's not something firing, it's something being hit, right? So, yeah, I mean, these are pink and blue, but I'm, as somebody who does stop motion, though it's been a while, I know, I know, time to get back to it. Uh, I like this because these are great practical effects. And now look at our boy. This is beautiful. I totally dig this. In terms of, I already gave his look a 10. In terms of the articulation, we have a head that goes left and right. This arm goes all the way around. It can go like weirdly out a lot to the, to the side. We have a very deep elbow, uh, bicep swivel. No, no hand because he has like a hoof there or something. Then we have this arm, weird head arm, it goes out about that far. It's effective enough, I guess. Um, again, we have a, a, an elbow to here, but if you want to turn the arm around this way, uh, you can have a much deeper elbow. We have a waist. Um, we have legs forward. We have legs back. We have a swivel at the thigh. We have 90 degree at the knee. We have, like, it's not a... I, I, I guess it's an ankle tilt. It seems a little high for an ankle tilt, but it's there. The guy stands pretty solid like a champ. This visor thing can go down over his eyes. I do find when the visor is down. In fact, the head in general gives me a strong, um, like, Unicron Trilogy Scorponok vibe. I think it was Unicron Trilogy. Um, but, like, I feel like that's what I'm seeing there. So, much like we had before, I'm still going to say about a 9.5 for the articulation. It's all there, really. It's just weird about the only thing that we're missing are hands. Hands would be nice. That's about it. Uh, again, the transformation, I'm going to say, is a 10. All of the tolerances on my copy are really, really, really tight, and I love that. I'm not going to show the transformation because we've seen it before, but his dino mode looks like this. I mean, come on, this is beautiful. It really, really is. I love how the black, the red, and the, the faded orange play off each other. Um, I, I, I gotta admit, I'm liking this a lot more than I expected that I would. I think this is a beautiful, burned up dinosaur mode. But of course, that's not all he does because this is a fossilizer. So he does have some like loadout gimmicks, as they call it. And the first one looks like this. So this is the first loadout, and I think that this one's a failure, to be honest with you. It's too heavy. It, I mean, it's flimsy and floppy because of the way the joints are. This loadout, being held, by the way, by Road Rage, but this loadout of a big hammer thing, I don't think works because it's... Do you know what the Tyrant Spear is like for Fast Track? Well, or Black or Ricci. Well, this is the same sort of thing. Like, it needs a stabilizer. I would never use this personally, but I mean to each their own. The second loadout is a little more successful. I mean, admittedly, successful is a rather loose term. I feel like the weaponizers are better at the loadouts than the fossilizers are. I think the fossilizers' strengths are their quirky robot modes and their pretty fantastic dinosaur modes. And there is one last loadout. I'll show it just cause. And finally, this one I only sort of showed with Rack tonight because in the like melee spiked thing over here, I did have the two big horns in the side, but the nose horn I could not get out of Rack tonight at all. So it didn't have the third spike up top. This one does, it came out a little bit easier. Again, like I said, I don't think that this is the strength of these guys. I think this is. This, man, this is the strength, and honestly, Tricranius, I think, is the one that stands out the most. I think he's the best of the bunch. Now, you might notice that the one that came in the smaller pack with Megatron isn't here. I don't have that smaller pack. It never came out here. Not that I want that Megatron. I have zero interest in it. But the Skelivore would be cool to have. As I look at all this, I look and I see beasts. I see what could be precursors or forerunners to Beast Wars. I see what could be forerunners to all of the Predacons that were ancestors, if you follow Transformers Prime, that were ancestors to the Autobots and Decepticons. Anything that has some sort of animalistic form, I see here. And somehow, some way, I gotta believe that these dudes can go together to be some form 
of Onyx Prime. I'm going to try it. I'm going to be exploring over the next little while to see if I can come up with a version that suits my taste. It won't be for everyone. We all know that. But a version that suits my taste and my needs for my 13. And if I accomplish that, then great. I will be more than happy to show it off. In the meantime, I think Tricranius is a win. He is an absolute weirdo. He looks glorious. He stands out on the shelf. He's functional. It's easy to get him in his various modes, though I wouldn't do the loadouts. I would either leave him this way or in Dinosaur because both look brilliant. Here we are, and here he is, and boy, oh boy, is this guy wild, man. Absolutely wild. Like, I knew he was red and black. I didn't realize there was so much translucent plastic. Now, it all feels rich and robust. It doesn't feel like clear plastic that's going to break. It actually feels... I don't even know what to call it, but it feels rich and robust to me. I have no worries about it. I did not realize from Rack Tonight that really what we have is like the rib cage or whatnot kind of molded over some of the plastic underneath um like it's almost like it's layered or textured on that's beautiful and brilliant there's a little bit of paint here but it's used to good effect i'm glad that this guy's actually a triceratops i thought the original one was a triceratops and people told me different now that i have all of these fossilizers i'm feeling like there might be an Onyx Prime in here somewhere. There might be a way to hodgepodge this as an Onyx Prime, which would make sense. Onyx Prime is the prime of beasts. All of these guys are or were beasts, if you see them as fossils. They don't really have a fiction because they didn't appear in the War for Cybertron trilogy. Um, so why not say that, you know what, amalgamated they are the last Prime I need for my original 13. Is it a way to do that? I'm not 100% sure, but I feel like it could be. And if there is, I'll be back here and I will let you guys know uh, if I was successful with that. Because it's so, like, he's such a difficult character. A lot of people say Prime Predaking, but, like, the dude has four legs, you know? Like, there's a lot going on there. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. We'll see down the road. But as a standalone, I like the blast effects. For me, I would use them for stop motion, right? For anybody who's not doing that, it, the blast effects might add value for you. They might not. If you don't like these guys, this isn't going to change it for you. If you do like these guys, this guy is probably the most beautiful fossilizer of them all. At least for my money and my interest. Let me know what you think about this guy and the blast effects for that matter. I appreciate you coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you if you're in a position to help the channel to grow. You can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring or of course hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member while you're at it, man. Hit the subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us here on the channel. Don't forget that somehow, someway, each and every single day each and every single day. You right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.